The Panasonic Lumix S1 and S1R both just got firmware updates. Let's take a look at what's new, see where to get it, and how to install it. Hey everybody, I'm Photo Joseph. I'm a Lumix ambassador, and I'm gonna show you the new updates for the S1 and S1R. But before I do, I wanna make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. If you're watching this, you are probably a Lumix user, and if you aren't already subscribed, then you're gonna be missing out on a lot of cool stuff coming up. Pretty soon, we're gonna be talking about Oh, I, I can't talk about those? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, I guess you just have to subscribe to find out. So today we're gonna take a look at the firmware update that was just released, and I'm going to actually download it and install it, but I wanna show you what's on it first. So to do that, we're gonna have to fast forward a little bit, and then we'll come back to the install process. Now let's talk about what's new. The first new feature is support for the ProGrade Digital CF Express Type B cards. Now I don't actually have one here yet to show you, so I'll have to just go like this and let one hover here above my hands for a moment. As soon as I do have one, I will of course share it with you. And I also have the new reader for it, so I'll put those two together and do a quick video for you on that. The second feature is PAL support for NTSC cameras. Now curiously, the PAL cameras already had NTSC support, but the NTSC ones did not have PAL. Not quite sure how that happened, but let's take a look at how to activate that. If you navigate over to the video menu and then over to the image format submenu, you'll find a new menu there called Switch NTSC and PAL. If you choose PAL, it's gonna give you a warning that this may not play back on some TVs, which makes sense because PAL footage doesn't play on NTSC TVs and vice versa. Go ahead and choose yes if you want to. And then above that, under record quality, you'll see that that menu has changed and you now have four different options. There's 3840 by 2160 or Ultra HD in 50p, that's at 4208 bit. You have Ultra HD 25p at 422 10-bit, then standard HD at 50p and 422 10-bit, and also at 25p and 422 10-bit. So for those of you who needed PAL region support, now you've got it. The third thing is actually a safety feature. This is something that is designed to make it harder to accidentally delete all the images on your card. Now, let me show you what I mean. First, I'm gonna to have to fire off a few frames here. So I have something to delete. Then I'll go to the play menu, press the delete button. And on here, you have three options, delete single, delete multi, and delete all. I can choose these with the scroll wheel or with the touch menu. But now when I go into the delete all page, I can no longer choose either of these options by touch. This is the safety feature. They've removed the ability to touch that delete all button. Apparently it was a little bit too easy to accidentally select and delete all of your pictures. No bueno. So instead now you have to use the menu to choose the option that you want, press the menu button, and then confirm it one more time. Okay, now let's go back to the future and install this thing. First step is to download the update. That's on the Panasonic firmware update page and I've linked to that down below and I'll print that somewhere up here on this screen, but I've already got it loaded up here. So when you go to the page, you'll see it takes you right to the full frame system camera lens page. That's what you want. And you'll notice down here under S1 and S1R, they've both been updated to version 1.5. Previously, there were versions 1.4 and 1.3. There's not a difference in the updates. They've just both been brought up to version 1.5 for consistency. You can see today's date, April 8th of 2020, and the curiously named click to the download page. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the one for the S1. And from here, all I need to do is download it. On this page as well, there's a button that says click here to the procedure for update. That's a complete instruction set for basically what I'm gonna show you right now. But if you have any issues, you want to just make sure you're doing everything right, you can certainly read that page there. While that's downloading, you can browse through the release notes to see what's been updated. And you'll also see what's been added to previous versions. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask me this question, so I'll answer it right now. You do not need to update previous versions first before you can add this update. No matter what version of the software you're on, you can just run this update and you'll get everything that was added before it. The download is done. You'll see that it downloaded a .zip file. If you see the .zip and not a .bin, double click the .zip so that it expands to a .bin and the .bin is the last file that you want. Don't try to expand it beyond the .bin file, that .bin is what you need. The next step is to get it from the computer into the camera, and we're gonna do that using a memory card. Now be sure that you format the card first. So navigate down to the wrench menu, which is actually called the setup menu. If you're ever confused about what a menu is called, you can just tap the display button and that'll reveal more information about it. 
Under the setup menu at the top is the card format option. From there, choose the card that you have inserted and reformat it. Go ahead and power off the camera, pull the card out and stick it into your computer. Copy that .bin to the root level of the card. Don't copy it into any folder inside of the card, just drag and drop it straight onto the card. That's all you have to do. Eject that and pop it back into your camera. Turn the camera on, press the menu button on the camera, and then still under the wrench menu, the setup menu, scroll down to the bottom under others, and then down to firmware version. Now you may notice that the firmware update option is actually not available. If that's the case, then that's because you have Bluetooth enabled on your camera. You have to disable Bluetooth before you can run the update. So to do that, back out of here, go up to the in and out menu, scroll down to Bluetooth and turn that off. Once that's off, go back over to the others menu, to firmware version, and now you can update it. Navigate to start update, hit yes, and that's all there is to it. At this point, don't do anything, don't touch anything, don't press any buttons, don't turn the camera off, don't take off the lens, just leave it alone. The progress bar will take a few minutes, and once it's done, your camera will be updated. Once the update is complete, the camera will automatically power cycle, and if you wanna verify that the update was successful, just go into the menu, go back into firmware version, and you'll see down there the current version of the firmware for the body, in this case, version 1.5. And that's it. Pretty straightforward update, three key features in there. Now there might be some other little bug fixes or things snuck in there that weren't mentioned in the release notes. Sometimes that happens, we really have no way to know. And because of that, it's generally a good idea to just update your firmware, even if you don't need any of these three features. If you have any questions about this update or past updates or really anything to do with Lumix cameras, drop them into the comments below. And also check out my live show. Every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I go live for about an hour, and I'm really there to answer your questions. Ask me anything about photography, about video, about Lumix cameras, and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you drop a question in the comments that I feel is a little bit too lengthy for me to respond by text, I will tell you which show to go to to check out that answer. And if you can get there live, that's great. And if not, you'll be able to watch the replay as a member of the Photo Joseph channel. That's it, folks. Thanks a bunch for tuning in today. And as always, I hope to see you next time.